Hi, uh, we're going to look at some um, slides in relation to online and hybrid teaching and learning. And these are going to discuss some of the experiences that I've had at undergraduate and at postgraduate level during the COVID uh, pandemic uh, at Maynooth University and at Trinity College in Dublin. So, one of the things that I found to be really successful in both places was a thing I call, I tend to call preemptive engagement. It's a pre-recording of some of the sessions that we were going to do online or in a hybrid uh, format. And one of the, this is one of the most important success factors, uh, having a pre-recording, something that you'd be going to do in class, maybe about 10, maybe no, no more than 20 minutes of a, a PowerPoint uh, presentation. Um, and implementing this as a preemptive, uh, pre-recorded, pre-available uh, program was really useful for students. Um, it was always considered, and I always considered it to be the baseline, um, the, the foothills of the subject, which brought people through the foothills of the subject and enabled them to do something different when you got them into the online hybrid situation. So what I tended to do was I tended to equalize remote students and face-to-face -face learners in the hybrid sessions. That was really, really good. For the online sessions where you were uh, delivering across the wires remotely but synchronously, that was always uh, uh, also very, very useful. And it, it became so, so successful that it, it was really, um, it ended up as being useful and used in all of the different formats whether it was asynchronous or synchronous, uh, whether it was um, hybrid or online, or whether it was face-to-face. -face. So the, the preemptive piece, you could call it a kind of um, getting them to do the reading uh, kind of piece, uh, except in a much more interesting way. And the second thing is the, the live class would, became for applying and critiquing and extending and improvising, etc. So a good way to probably look at it is maybe they won't do the reading, maybe they'll do a little bit of the reading, but this helps that they get, you get what you're trying to achieve with the reading. One of the reasons why you don't get artificial intelligence to do this stuff is because they really want it to be about you. They want, they want you, they want a human being, they want their lecturer. Um, so, it because it's relevant because you're going to be the uh, you're the person who, who is part of the uh, the university you're the person who is part of their setup and um, they don't um, they'll watch a youtube but they don't want it. Um, so make it about yourself um, connect with them entertain them make it a bit personal um, others others may be able to do this better uh, you'll always find somebody who will be able to do a presentation better than you. Um, but that's not what they're looking for. In all the surveys, uh, it comes out that they're looking for the human being that they know. Now, try and make there to be a consequence of not doing the watching of the video. And what I mean by that is try and make sure that there's a quiz on the video when you get them back into the class or when you get them online have a quiz about it, have a summary, have some kind of a, an activity or an exercise. Um, and this adds to the personalization of the whole thing. It becomes really part of your style, part of the way you do things, part of your, your efforts. That doesn't excuse people from doing reading, but one of the things students will always appreciate if you prioritize reading, so you could describe your reading as uh, here's four pieces um here's a bit that's required here's a bit that's recommended here's a bit that's optional and here's a bit that's nerdy and 
So even expressing it like that, it's friendly, it's warm, it helps the student to prioritize, but also it'll tempt them, tempt them not to dismiss a reading out of hand because you're being clear, but you're being also very realistic. You know they've got busy lives. So when you're designing your pieces, they, these are your live pieces, let's call them, your, your hybrid or your online live, or even your face-to-face. -face. Consider them as 20-minute sprints. So if you've got a 40-minute session, it's two 20-minute about sprints. But that doesn't mean it's going to be a 20-minute lecture followed by a 20-minute discussion. So what I would advise doing is, what I do is I use a series of exercises that can be scaled up to the online classes. So it's rather um, uh, the, the kind of exercises that you do should be uh, should be amenable to be put into an online uh, group, which is a scaled up in size. And stuff like that can be things like paired negotiations, like an exercise like paired negotiations is a really interesting. They can be trios even, uh, and trios are, is often a useful way to do. Uh, any kind of interpersonal communication um, because you can have two actors and you can have then you can have um, a person who is being the observer taking notes and correcting to see if it's been done correctly so you can obviously have simulations you can simulate uh, scripted simulations of, of real life interactions uh, you can do that as, as exercises throughout the uh, the class and you can also do um, polls of course just, you know, um, almost like uh, sampling the group and getting them to interact and engage so polls could be very useful for getting information out onto the table um, the way people think about things and gets them to engage much more in the class you can also do things like show and tell so the show and teller um, here's, a, here's a steal from Harvard, uh, you're presenting a theory to the, the hybrid or to the online class or, um, and you say to them, you have five minutes to find an item in your house, uh, a picture in your computer that matches this theory. Now this is a, the style, this is a style of um, find something for your life that you can actually, from your life that you can actually make sense of this theory and this is one really strong way of teaching. Um, you can see it in, the, in, in children's classes, it's show and tell, it's, it's making the, the child um, or the learner bring something into the classroom which uh, is from their life and um, getting them to explore the idea of how the theory they've learned in the class is relevant to their home life and once that's connected it's, it's never broken, it's impossible to break it again. So, um, just to give you an example, at postgrad level, um, I used to, to encourage them to bring in a tweet, um, uh, bring in a quotation, uh, a snippet from a movie, uh, something from uh, the internet, uh, something from Instagram. Um, so, nowadays it would be um, out ahead of Instagram's TikTok, so it would be something from TikTok that people could uh, could show and tell and make sense of a piece of theory that you're talking to them about. Sometimes you get an opportunity to have the expected or the unexpected uh, guest. So the expected guest is you can have somebody with a planned drop in uh, to the online uh, uh, session, online or hybrid session. They can drop in to the physical class or they can actually drop in uh, to the online onto Zoom. Um, the other thing is to, is to engage a family member who was at the shop, happened to me uh, last week, where uh, my, my grandkids uh, came to, into the, uh, the room when I was on the um, on Zoom uh, doing a facilitation. So um, if you're the lecturer in that situation, uh, be warm about it, engage, say hello, and uh, 
if possible, even chat. Um, but uh, take the stress off of the person. Uh, for me, I made a play of it. It's like, this is great. You know, it's giving me a little bit of rest. Maybe they'll take over or something. Else. So it, it, may, it shows that you're, you're human. And uh, this is an awful, there's, an, there's a nice lightening of the mood in relation to, to that. And everybody gets permission to be themselves. So the, all of the, the, the platforms that you use um, allow breaking into teams and this is obviously a, a way to do it but you know sync parent share is probably a better way than just to quick break into, into teams. Um, experiential ex exercises and role plays obviously can be done um, at least take a little bit more planning but they can be part of the sprint. Um, they're obviously, if, you, if you're going to break people into, into Zoom rooms, it's obviously, obviously better if you have a structured observation. So you've given them, uh, you've, you've trained them in how to observe what's in front of them in the experiential exercise, but you also probably have even given them documentation so that they can tick off. An example of this was how to do listening. So um, I give out a, a sheet for the observers that they can tick off the different critical behaviors of listening. So they're in the room, um, they're able to uh, watch the two uh, protagonists um, conducting the exercise and they go through the, um, uh, the document and tick off, make notes of what. Uh, so when they come back, they can report on, on the same uh, event in a structured way. So in relation to polls, obviously, um, different ways of doing it. You can do, you can do Slido or you can do the polls in Zoom. Um, typical questions you ask in polls is, is really, especially at the start of something, um, um, introducing a subject and then ask, what do you think about it? Um, what are you most concerned about? It? Like could be, you can maybe talk about CVs or cover letters or interviews or something like that. Um, what are you most excited about? Um, so it, this could be uh, this can be really useful, and the, and the, the slicker the poll, the better. So the slider was probably the best in terms of integrating with your uh, with the tools you, you normally use, and that's that's um, that's one of the better better tools. Another thing to um, and probably a final point we've made here is, is the idea of cognitive load. Now cognitive load um, when you're in a situation like um, uh, hybrid or online uh, situation. Um, it's a bit different to the classroom. Um, so the classroom has been around for so long and you've got such a level of comfort with, it. with technology, technology breaks. Um, there's an awful lot uh, coming at you. Um, so a few little things to, uh, to help the cognitive load so that it doesn't overcome you. Um, and that you're able to deal effectively with things as they happen. So, for example, use use a thing called Keep. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a thing called Keep you can use, which um, helps you to create, as you think of it, a list of things that you need to bring with you, to have by your hand, to consider when you're putting it. So, uh, you can get it in the App Store or you can get it off Google Play. So just any or any kind of a, a note-taking device keep it there that you can have you can see and you can make uh, so it, so when you get there so in other words when you open that zoom or when you into that classroom or you, you kick off the hybrid so that you've you've ticked off all the boxes that you've got everything that you need uh, for the session the other thing is uh, in a session, you quite often have chat. Now, chat can be going on between people and it can be going on in front of you. Um, people can be doing it um, uh, to each other, but to everybody. Um, so, obviously, you won't see the private stuff, but you will you will see the stuff whereby people are, are out there. So, you may see indicators that it's there. Um, one way I find is useful is to um, have somebody monitor it and Perhaps um, when it reaches a certain number of, of chat messages, 
that you get flagged with this individual that you probably need to take a look at it because there won't be time at the end to look at or some of these are important to um, uh, to deal with because you're, you're moving you, you don't want to move away from the subject you want to actually uh, make sure you uh, uh, you do these things and not wait until the end of the class to do it um, so that's one thing and you delegate that to a, a trusted person and talk to the student reps about um, who might uh, be suitable uh, to take on something like that you know some of the students who are um, especially first class honor students um, they in a class like this they've got a low cognitive load and something like this would actually make a difference to them make it much more interesting for them um, so uh, the third one is, is when you get into if, if a slight hiccup happens um, narrate what you're doing so if something happens that um, your, your internet becomes unstable um, or if you want to look at a question that somebody has raised um, tell them that that's what you're doing so say I'm now going to look into the chat and um, I'm going to read what's there and let me see and here's so instead of leaving a long silence um, narrate as you go so people will be comfortable because nobody wants to be sitting there thinking um, is the person in trouble or my god are they waiting for an answer from me and the other thing is that this stuff is even more important if something's gone wrong so um, for example if they can hear you but you can't hear them so I'm, I've got something in relation to my speakers wrong I'm not hearing anybody and I'm, I can see by the uh, by the system that you can hear me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out and I'm going to log back in again and that will take me a minute or two so if you can hold on there and uh, please excuse me while I do this and narrate what you're doing um, if something isn't working uh, because uh, a lot of the times something that somebody is, isn't working and if you narrate what you're doing someone will help you and fix it for you um, and that's what a lot of students are, are particularly good at so there are some of the, the the key thoughts to stimulate discussion on this topic of uh, online and hybrid.